Hey folks, David Stewart here. What if I told you that you could do almost all of your design work with just three fonts? I hope you'll believe me because I'm going to explain how that's possible and in fact, explain how I almost do that. I almost do all of my work with just three fonts. Before I dig into it, let me say that this video is directed towards, say, enterprising authors. My focus is really on book cover design because I design my own book covers. Um, but it could easily be used by anyone that's wanting to be a do-it-yourselfer as far as graphic design goes. If you're trying to design a good brochure for your company, there should be some principles in here that will be useful to you. So without further ado, let's jump in and let's talk about these fonts. I'm actually giving you three categories and I'm gonna give you some recommended fonts for each category. You need a serif, a sans serif, and a title font. If you just have three fonts, one from each of those categories that are like your workhorse fonts and you know them and you know that they look good, you'll find that you can do almost all of your design work with just those fonts. So a serif font, if you don't know what a serif font is, it looks like this. It has little bits attached to the edges of the letters, which makes them all a little bit asymmetrical and easy to identify if you're reading a string of letters or you're seeing it in a paragraph. So serif fonts, you are primarily going to use serif fonts for paragraphs. You can use them for titles, obviously. You can use them for other bits of text. But uh, when you're doing a paragraph, you really want it to be serif. And this is kind of an exclusionary thing. You don't want to do sans serif for most of your paragraphs. Sans serif is less legible. What ends up happening with sans serif, if we look at sans serif, it's missing all of those bits on the on the fonts. These are little teardrops here, these little things on the bottom of the F. You can see that those are missing. So as a result, when you're trying to read a serif font in a paragraph, what ends up happening is you kind of see a field of vertical lines and it becomes a little bit more difficult to read it quickly. So in general, serif fonts are gonna be your paragraph. If you're setting the interior of a book or you're doing paragraphs or a brochure or something, serif is what you want. My recommended font for serif use is Adobe Garamond Pro. It's very, very versatile. You can use it in lots of different sizes. I use it for all of my bigger books. All of my six by nine books are in Adobe Garamond Pro. It looks great on a bigger page. Now, you may not have the money or you may not want to spend the money on a font. So a really, really good free alternative is EB Garamond. You can Google it and just find it for free. It's a whole family of fonts. And one big advantage to it is it has a different typeface for the size 8 and size 12. So if you're doing standard sized fonts, which is going to be size 12, or maybe you're doing 11 for like a book interior, they have a font for that. And if you're doing captions, something very small, they have a size eight font and it has a little heavier weight, so it's more legible. This is a basic basic thing about typography. The smaller you go, the heavier the weight of the letters needs to be and really the taller what's called the X height needs to be. And if you don't wanna download any font, you can just use Times New Roman. Uh, there's you know big name books that are still set in Times New Roman. And if somebody's saying Times New Roman's bad or something, it's really not. Now it is designed to be for newspaper columns. So it's not the perfect font for a big page, but it works. You know, it, there's really no problem using Times New Roman. Most people are never gonna notice what font is on the interior, except that it's a serif font and therefore looks right. If you choose a sans serif font, it will look wrong and people will, if they don't know anything, they'll scratch their heads about why the interior of the book looks weird. Sans serif fonts are those that don't have those little, little bits added onto the um, what are called serifs added on to the font. So a sans serif font is very modern looking. It's very sleek looking. It's great for science fiction books. It's great for ad copy in general. It's great for anything that you want to look hip, modern, 20th century and beyond. A sans serif font that I recommend is Future of PT. This is another Adobe Typekit font, so it will cost you money, but it has a huge number of, um, of different styles that are built into it. So it has different weights of all the way from light, which you see up here with sans serif, um, all the way down to like an extra bold that it looks great at a whole bunch of different sizes. And so the smaller it is, generally the heavier you want it. And you have those options with this. This looks great. Like if you were going to design a modern book that maybe takes place in the modern period, kind of contemporary lit fiction, Feature of PT would look great for the title or for the, the author name for both. So it's a great font to use all around. There is a free version 
I call it Joseph and Sands. It's really not the same at all, but it has the same feel and it has actually its own unique feel with those kind of slightly slightly sideways ease. Uh, and it does have a whole bunch of different versions, including like a, a super thin version if you really want it to be big and just look really refined. It has a great thin version. So it has its own flavor. You can always do um, both, but if you're looking for a free alternative, um, Joseph and Sands works great. If you're just looking to pick a font that's already on your system, Arial will be it, but Arial generally doesn't look good as a title font. It doesn't look good very big um, on any kind of design. And that's because the X height is so very, very large. It looks okay if you're going to do it, say, all caps. Um, this really doesn't look too bad. It looks okay. Uh, but if you're not doing it as all caps, the X height is how tall the little letters are. Um, it's, it's made for looking at it at a at a small size. So it doesn't look quite as good. It looks a little awkward, a little over fat. It doesn't just, it's less than ideal for um, for bigger design work, but it could work as a small paragraph or as a small little bit of text, just fine. Uh, the last category is a title font. A title font, you notice these are actually serif fonts, but they're designed to look like big, bold fonts that take up the title of a book or something like that. So my choice for the premium version is gonna be Trajan Pro 3. I use Trajan Pro 3. I use it on you know video thumbs. I use it on book covers. I use it uh, on ad copy. I use it over and over again because it is so legible, it's so clear, and it has a great style to it, especially that P that's just slightly not connected. It just looks great. It's a great um, it's a great font. It has a, a great bold, a great light version. So there's lots of different options for how you can make this title look with Trajan Pro 3. If you're looking for a free version, Optimus Princeps is it. Optimus Princeps likewise has its own flavor. You'll notice that the P looks the same, but it goes above and below the smaller letters. These are technically what's called small cap fonts, meaning um, when you have a capital letter, it's simply bigger than the other letters and all the letters are capital letters. So in this case, the capitals go above and below, which can have a really good look for say a chapter heading in a book. So it has its own flavor. I've used it um, before in some books. If you want one that probably came on your system, Perpetua Titling is a good choice. Um, the only problem with Perpetua Titling is that it's very much a titling font. So you usually have to do a little bit of design work to get those different sized uh, letters to come out and look good. But it does look it does look fine. I think the the U, this kind of giant lowercase U, looks very Roman to me. So I really like the flavor of Perpetua titling. And I'm just gonna make one more font recommendation. Cormorant. This is a free font. It's a huge font family. It has a small cap version. This is the small cap version, which is great for titling, but it also has a regular serif version. This is not a font that's really designed for book interiors, so I wouldn't use it for that, but it looks really good if you need just a little text block or you need um, a couple of words and you want it to, to have a good thin version of serif. It's very elegant looking when you actually see it kind of blown up and big. There's lots of different versions. I use it all the time. I use it for my author name on most of my books. It's very characteristic for me to use it. So those are the fonts that I recommend. Now, let me back up what I'm saying and let's look at a couple of the designs just to just to kind of prove some of my points and just to see how other people do it. So I just grabbed a couple books off my bookshelf. Let's look at them and see what they did. And you'll see that they really are just using one or two fonts. And if you pick the fonts that I recommend, you can easily design these. So first one is by Marcus Heitz. He's a German author. I think he did the new Blind Guardian book, the, the Shadowlands or whatever it is. I haven't read it yet. This one's called Righteous Fury. You can see this is a title font, much like Trajan Pro, uh, just big letters. Now you could also just make this with a, a serif font and make it all caps, but title fonts are really designed to look good at this size. So I would try to find one that's especially designed for that. And then we have sans serif for the author title and sans serif for this, um, sans serif for the little the little blurb up there. There's a, what I can see, there's two or three fonts used on the entire, um, you know, the entire design. So it looks good. Uh, you can just make this with those fonts that I chose and it would look exactly the same almost it wouldn't look exactly the same but it had the same flavor and it would communicate almost the exact same intent which is when you see a big title font like this this means like fantasy or history it means establishment and seriousness that's the emotion that gets communicated with that all right the coming of conan this is a great this is a great edition of a book you can see this is basically just a title font it's like trajan pro 3 
Conan is a special font. That's the only special font here. Otherwise, you're looking at title fonts all the way across. And if I were to guess, it'd probably be some variation of Trajan. Okay, so there you go. And then for the paragraphs on the back, it is a serif font. Times New Roman or something like Times New Roman. Very, very simple for how that's designed. Here's another Conan book. This one, Old Pulp. It's just sans serif. Sans serif is very legible at a small size. So because this is a small book, the sans serif looks very big and bold and nice. There's one more, another fantasy book, Lord of the Rings. This is has the movie cover on it, but the text design is very good. Again, it's just a title title font. And most of this, like, people are like, why do I get a font that says Lord of the Rings? Well, this is just a title font that they did design work with. They made the I slightly smaller. They ran it into the R. They made the L bigger, put the O over the L, you know, made the the and of the different sizes, put some underline, drew some underlines under it. This design work really makes the Lord of the Rings stand out as a, as a logo and makes it look good. But it's the same font, right? It's just a title font like Trajan. Return of the King, it's just a title font like Trajan. Very, very simple to, to design this actually. So on the back, serif font. And I don't think there's any sans serif used on this. There's sans serif used like in the little tiny, the little tiny stuff is sans serif, but otherwise you're not using it. You know, pretty simple. So those are some examples. If we want, we can look at a couple of my covers. Um, let's look at, here we go. City of Silver. So City of Silver, you can get uh, get this 99 cents on, on Amazon for this book. Uh, I used a, a title font here called Sinzel Decorative, which is great for fantasy. So if you're looking for something that really communicates fantasy with this fancy C and this fancy S, it's good. But again, most of the work is in the design work. If I were to change this to Trajan, um, the C wouldn't look nearly as nifty, but I could do the same design with Trajan Pro, no problem, or Optimus Princeps. What you have is you have a separate, um, you know, you have a separate a separate letter for the C, separate letters for the S to make them pop out and be bigger. So you're doing design work that increases that asymmetry and makes the, the letters and the words different sizes. That's really what uh, what goes into good design. Uh, this is just Sinzel over here, regular Sinzel, not the decorative version. Has It's another just standard title font. It's free, by the way, so that's a good another good choice besides Optimus Princeps is Sinzel. And uh, the interior here is just, I think, Caslon or Arno. Yeah, Caslon. Same same kind of thing as Germon. It's a serif font. So you could do this with Adobe Germon and Trajan Pro and have no problems. This is Cormorant down here. Cormorant SC, which is small caps. And then this is probably Cormorant upright, I think, above it. And that little line there, that's just some design elements. You can really make your designs pop by having things like that. Now, this one is a really good example. The font for Eyes in the Wall is Trajan Pro 3. Okay, that is the font for all of these letters. But what I did was each of these is a separate object um, that I changed the size of and changed the placement of very carefully to get this claustrophobic feel where the, the fonts are, the letters are going into the spaces between each other uh, because that tends to have an emotion related to fear. So this, if it was presented without that design element would look like a fantasy. Um, a fantasy font but with these design elements it looks like horror in the with these um, these serifs kind of going into each other the l's of different sizes the s kind of fitting in between all the l's all of that design work is what makes this title work and so if you're to just look at this as eyes in the wall like it is on the spine it's pretty simple but when we see it like this that's where it has uh, that impact and if, over here just another serif font this one is arno pro you could use Times New Roman for this and it wouldn't make that much of a difference. And this, of course, is Cormorant once again. So thanks so much for watching. Here are those again. My recommendations, Garamond Pro, Future PT Trajan Pro, if you're going to buy fonts or you have access to Adobe Typekit. If you're looking for free, EB Garamond, Joseph Von Sins, Optimus Princeps, or Sinzel. Sinzel is also a good one, so I'll add that one in there. And you can use system fonts, but it's not that hard to grab a font and install it. But if you're on the go, maybe you're on your work computer and you can't install a font, those are some options for you to, um, to make your designs look good, look pretty good. So thanks so much. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I do have a new book coming out. 
the book is called um, Keys to Prolific Creativity. It will be coming out in March. It will have a bunch of stuff in it that uh, I think will be useful for people who are writers, artists, um, anything that that's having to do with the arts. I think you will like it. So here's what the book cover design looks like. Um, I may alter a couple things before I make this go live, but this is the initial design. You can see it's Trajan Pro 3. The keys to creativity is all Trajan Pro. This is an, a little bit of a stylized uh, title font called Mason, and then this is a black letter font. I'm not talking about black letter this time, but this is just future up here. You can see that I tend to use the same fonts over and over again. I have my money where my mouth is, and it comes up with a pretty good design. So you can get that in March. Make sure you're on my mailing list, deviouspress.com slash list. This will be my first nonfiction book with lots of tips for creative people to develop a great process and put out a lot of different stuff. So thanks so much, and I will see you guys next time.